This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Good evening, I'm Amanda Starantino with the RTV6 Studios. And I'm Mark Mullins at my home studio as we continue to practice social distancing. And first at 6 o'clock tonight, the Indiana State Health Department reports 45 new coronavirus deaths. So far, COVID-19 has killed 706 Hoosiers. The state says 612 more people have tested positive for coronavirus. And there have been a total of 13,039 positive cases confirmed since the pandemic began. And 72,040 people have tested for the virus entirely. And more coronavirus tests are set to go to areas of Indianapolis getting hit harder by the virus in an effort to help those communities rebound and recover faster. The city of Indianapolis and the Marion County Health Department plan to bring up to 3,000 coronavirus tests per week to Marion County neighborhoods showing a higher risk of COVID-19 infection. The first testing site will be the Eastern Star Church in the Arlington Woods neighborhood on the northeast side. Marion County is working with IU Health to get testing supplies. And the city of Fishers has unveiled a plan to offer free COVID-19 testing to residents while also establishing a city health department. Starting by the end of next week, Mayor Scott Fadness says the Fishers Fire Department is expected to provide free COVID-19 testing to any Fishers resident who wants one. He will also ask the Fishers City Council to create the city's own health department. There will be an emergency city council meeting on Friday in an effort to get approval for this entire program. Call 6 Investigates is digging into concerns that the state could do better to make sure people with disabilities in Indiana are treated fairly amid this pandemic. Our Kara Kenny found out what groups are doing to ensure people with disabilities are getting life-saving treatments. An estimated 1 million people in Indiana are living with a disability, and advocates want to make sure they're treated fairly when it comes to COVID-19. Sean Fulton is an adult with a disability living in central Indiana. But I have, do have um, a slow learner. Um, I have an anger issue. He's practicing social distancing and worries about getting COVID-19. Thank God I haven't gotten any symptoms or anything. Um, I'm doing what they say. Sean works for the Ark of Indiana, an organization that is working to make sure that people with disabilities like Sean are treated fairly if they're diagnosed with COVID-19. History, unfortunately, um, has always been that, you know, the, the value of people with disabilities has not always been seen as strong. Indiana has not had a shortage of ventilators, but some are concerned about what could happen if doctors have to make difficult decisions. Indiana Disability Rights wrote this letter April 16th to the U.S. Health and Human Services Agency, urging them to put pressure on states and hospitals so that people with disabilities are not denied life-saving treatments. They're also asking states like Indiana to track whether a patient has a disability, much like they track race and age. Call 6 Investigates found Indiana's COVID response plan does not include ventilator triage guidance. Hospitals make those decisions. What we need to make sure is that hospitals and medical personnel are making decisions from a medical perspective and not from a value-based judgment perspective. Um, and so we're trying to work with the hospital association to see if we can get some of the policies changed to reflect that. We reached out to the Indiana Hospital Association who told us hospitals do not base allocation decisions on a person's relative worth based on the absence or presence of disabilities. Sean hopes hospitals stick to that policy. Being equal, it would be the um, key word there. If you or a loved one feel you've been discriminated against, you can contact Indiana Disability Rights. We've included links on how to do that in this story on the RTV6 app and the IndyChannel.com. Reporting in Indianapolis, Care Kenny, RTV6. The latest numbers show Indiana has more than 3,200 ventilators and only 10% are being used by COVID-19 patients. 77% are still available. However, the state health officials expect COVID-19 to peak in Marion County in late April and throughout the state in early to mid-May. And COVID-19 continues to leave tens of thousands of people jobless in Indiana. For the week ending April 18th, 75,483 Hoosiers filed for unemployment benefits. However, this is the third week in a row unemployment claims have actually decreased, showing Indiana may be rebounding a bit. The week before, 118,000 people filed for unemployment. And at the peak, the week ending March 28th, 
139,000 people filed unemployment claims. For more perspective, just before the COVID-19 pandemic hit Indiana, the week ending March 14th, only 2,500 people filed for unemployment. And while Indiana is paying out a record amount of unemployment benefits to help Hoosiers rebound and get back on their feet, some people are not receiving money. They are having trouble filing. RTV6's Megan Sanctorum learned about the roadblocks and challenges some people continue to face. It's tough because I mean, we keep expecting it, expecting it. Waiting for a payment that hasn't come. They have not issued any of his money. And it's been past the 21 days. The Arnolds are just one of many families in central Indiana left with more questions than answers about the status of their unemployment benefits. There's never been any yellow triangles. There's never been anything to pop up to say there was something wrong. Sean Arnold says he was laid off from his job at a factory back in March. Now the only income they have is from his wife Arlie's job, but they say it's not enough to get by. We owe rent, we owe bills that we just can't cover. They are relying on unemployment benefits, but they're not sure if or when those will come. The state's system is bogged down and was never designed to handle a volume like this. It's just been extremely, extremely frustrating and very stressful. Haley Wyrick is also waiting on unemployment. This new mom says she got one payment several weeks ago, but they've since stopped and she's not sure why. I have nothing, like I don't have anything to pay rent. I don't have anything, you know, to pay utilities. I don't have anything to pay for this lovely bundle of joy right here. Um, I have nothing. She too was laid off from a factory job. It's frustrating to look at him and not be able to pay for what he needs. Both families say they will continue to keep calling and checking the website, hoping for answers soon. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. As part of RTV6's effort to help Central Indiana come back from this pandemic, we heard a, held a virtual town hall last night with three key members from the Department of Workforce Development. And we got many of your questions about unemployment answered. Two key questions we kept hearing, what should I do before applying for unemployment? And what should I do if I'm having trouble getting through the process? Well, hopefully before you applied, you got onto our website, unemployment.in.gov. You re read the frequently asked questions, you looked at the claimant handbook, you've looked at the online tutorials, you have an understanding of what the process is gonna be because that will give you a lot of information. Um, if you're a self-employed individual or an independent contractor, or someone who didn't have enough wages to set up a regular unemployment insurance claim, hopefully you know that you'll be eligible for the pandemic unemployment insurance. And also if you go to our website, you'll find a link to that, um, that new federal program and that will give you some additional information. We are constantly updating our website, typically on a daily basis with new frequently asked questions. As you're asking them, if we don't have information out there, we're adding it to FAQs um, to get you that information. We know that when you call into our contact center, the lines, the waits are long. Um, we've added 100 agents on top of the agents we already had. We're continually looking to improve that process. Unfortunately, when you call into the contact center, they're not gonna be able to resolve your issues. They're gonna be able to tell you what you can find for yourself on that claimant homepage when you log into our system. You go to the claimant homepage, you can see information about your claim. They can help you understand what's on that, that, that page, but they can't actually resolve the issue for you. That's what goes to one of our claims investigators that Josh was talking about. And those issues just take, can take a while to get through given the volume of claims we have and the um, fact finding that we have to do to ensure that that person really is eligible for unemployment insurance. If you missed RTV6's virtual town hall with the Department of Workforce Development, you can watch it right now at the IndieChannel.com slash rebound. It's a must watch if you have questions about filing for unemployment. As we've mentioned, COVID-19 has thousands of people in Indiana without a job right now. But here at RTV6, it's been our commitment for more than a year to connect you with available jobs through our Hiring Hoosiers campaign. And it's time for our Hiring Hoosiers job feed, Clean Source Commercial Cleaning Service has two part-time positions available, a floor technician and a cleaning associate. Carol's Corporation, which is a Burger King franchisee, is hiring a restaurant assistant manager now. And Home Helpers Home Care of Carmel is hiring. They say if you're a caregiver looking for consistent hours, work-life balance, and career growth, they have positions for you. 
Engeldau Group, a local landscape design and maintenance company, is hiring landscape crew members, a mowing crew member, and a chemical applicator. Telecommunications company Metronet is hiring a sales assistant in Carmel and a broadband technician in Lafayette. All of these positions came from our Hiring Hoosiers job board at HiringHoosiers.com. Companies post their job openings to that board every day, complete with a link to the application process. So just go to HiringHoosiers.com and you'll see the job board there. The Indiana Department of Transportation will hold a virtual job fair in which more than 100 positions will be available. Jobs include summer seasonal workers, highway technicians, equipment mechanics, and construction engineers. The virtual job fair is Thursday, April 30th from 10 to 11 a.m. It's happening on Microsoft Teams, which is an online video conferencing application for both desktop and mobile devices. We have the link you need to participate in the in.job Job Fair up right now on HiringHoosiers.com and on the RTV6 app. Another huge event cancellation because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Indiana Black Expo officials tell RTV6 they will cancel this year's summer celebration, including the concerts that have been scheduled for July. This year's summer celebration was supposed to help mark the Black Expo's 50th anniversary, but they now hope to have that celebration next summer. The Black Expo says they will try to hold the education and business conferences for summer celebration as virtual meetings. Also, Black Expo officials say they will cancel this fall Circle City Classic football game and parade out of an abundance of caution for public safety. Legendary Indiana High School basketball coach Ed Siegel has died from COVID-19. Sports director Dave First looks back at the incredible life of the longtime Pike Boys basketball coach and his massive contributions to Indiana High School basketball. But up next, you may not know what a kolache is, but they're a delicious bite any time of day. One new restaurant in Carmel is serving them up with a side of heart. We'll explain. And I know you're familiar with this rain on Storm Team 6 radar. Thinning out tonight, but when more rain, possibly heavy, returns for the weekend. Um, what is open and ready to move you. There are a handful of restaurants in the area that opened just before the state's stay-at-home orders went into effect. Certainly a difficult situation. One new restaurant in Carmel is using its local support to help others. Brad Brown shows us how. The new Kalachi factory near 106th Street and Michigan Road opened on March 4th. Less than two weeks later, owner Lan Haywood had to make a quick pivot. We don't get as much walk-in traffic uh, with not as many people going to work. It's just not, the, the volume of business is just not there. Um, so we've really been able to adapt and come together as a team and it's really been good for us. But his crew has made the adjustments to stay open. Customers continue to turn out for these pillowy soft buns filled with anything from breakfast to lunch to fruity sweets. Kalachi is a Czechoslovakian originated dish. The original Kalachi was just fruit. One of those customers came from just up the road. Michael Dickerson works at Engage Financial Group. He's been gathering big lunch orders from coworkers and friends and supporting local restaurants. They're trying to hold on to their employees as long as they can. Um, and they need to pay their rent. They need to pay their utilities. They need business from people. One day a couple weeks ago, Michael made a stop for kolaches, a lot of kolaches. And he left a very generous tip for Lan and his staff. One, I like kolaches. Um, but two, he had just opened. So, you know, if we could support him and keep him going. It's a pretty big order and it's good for us. Um, but we're also able to build relationships, especially now since we're new. So that's great. Lan turned that tip into a gift card to pay it forward. This week, they donated several big boxes of baked goods to the staff and kids at the Indianapolis Children's Bureau. We're really looking to partner and be a part of the community and support those people who are on the front lines doing the hardest part of this work. A lot of the credit you know, goes right back to him. He's done a good job, a uh, good business owner. He's just trying to support people. A great example of opening wallets and opening hearts, working together in these tough times. My main goal for this was to see if I get a couple of people doing the same thing. Um, and, you know, a few people do the same thing for different businesses. Uh, that can make a big difference. I think that if we can weather this uh, opportunity, then we'll definitely be poised for a, a, a good future here. Working for you in Carmel, Brad Brown, RTV6. And there are two other local kolache factory locations locally, 96th Street and Allisonville Road, also at 116th and Guilford in Carmel. Kevin, have you ever had one of those? They look good. I... I've had so many, um, I, I guess I would call those sweets, so I'm sure I have.
If, if it's something sweet, I'm in. I know Brad said they're filled with all kinds of uh, things, but yes. All right, let's talk about the rain. We've all had some rain today. We'll likely have widespread rain, some of it heavy, as we get to Saturday into Sunday. But we're thinning this out tonight. 59 in Lafayette, temperature also in Terre Haute at 55. All of the rain is moving to the north and east between Frankfort and Tipton, some rain southeast of Marion toward Hartford City. Anderson and Muncie, some showers. A little heavier shower activity. Southern Vermilion, that'll move between Terre Haute and Rockville and continue its march to the east across Park County. After the rain ends, which will be before midnight, if we see some clearing in the skies, I do think we develop fog, especially in the western portion of the state. Temperatures will be in the 40s. All lined up for you in the morning, clouds willing. You should be able to see Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter look to the southeast before sunrise. Just check if they're available for viewing, then you're lucky. As hopefully you can get outside, sit on the back porch and enjoy some milder temperatures tomorrow and dry conditions. That's the key. Temperatures warm into the upper 60s for the afternoon high. Temperatures about 65 for the average this time of year. Western Indiana and southwest Rockville to Bloomington toward Terre Haute and Bedford temperatures right at 70. 60 Saturday rain. Some of it may be heavy. 57 on the Sunday. And as far as the rain Rainfall. Watch how it spirals into the state during the day Saturday, lingers Saturday night into Sunday morning. Forecast models have anywhere from an inch and a half to over two inches of rain. Keep that in mind. Rain ends Sunday. Temperatures Monday with dry conditions at 63. Dry, but not for long because Monday or Tuesday and Wednesday, showers and thunderstorms return to the forecast. Well, RTV6 and ABC are your home for complete NFL draft coverage. The first round begins at tonight at 8 o'clock. Commissioner Roger Goodell will be announcing the picks from home, and all the teams will be working remotely. Round 2 kicks off at 7 tomorrow night. That's when the Colts are set to make their first picks. Saturday's coverage starts at noon. Again, that's all right here on RTV6. COVID-19 is responsible for the deaths of more than 700 Hoosiers. And now it's claimed the life of a legendary Indiana high school basketball coach. Coach Ed Siegel is known for his many years leading the Pike High School Red Devils basketball team. But sports director Dave Fur shows us Siegel's impact goes well beyond the court. The gym at Pike, like all the others around the country, remained quiet. This one named after Ed Siegel, who died this week of COVID-19. You'll find a fair share of his accomplishments and a plaque honoring Ed's son, Mark. Back in 1977 was part of the plane crash that took the lives of the University of Evansville basketball team. Ed's daughter, Julie, and youngest son, David, joining in a conference call from their homes. A lot of people saw your dad as the coach. What was he like as a father? Faith was always a big thing to dad. And that I guess is something that I found such great comfort from him is that I had this beautiful faith and a love for family. And that's probably something that I will hold in my heart forever. Family was always first, you know, no matter he would sacrifice anything. He would literally sacrifice anything that he was doing or what was important to him to take care of his family. Clearly, the caring continued to the court. In fact, there was no stopping Ed Siegel, building a program and putting Pike basketball on the map to the tune of five Marion County championships, four sectionals, and two regionals. And when Jason Williams and LaSalle Thompson went on to play college basketball, well, Ed Siegel was right in the middle. He could work the sidelines with the best of them. How, how tough was he? Uh, I lost my dad at an early age. So I never really had that person that would, you know, get my butt and, and tell me what, what, what I didn't necessarily want to hear. Coach was um, definitely, you know, kind of in that Bobby Knight, uh, Gene Cady era of coaching. <laughs> <laughs> but truly a bond that lasts forever. Just last fall, it was Siegel who was in West Lafayette to visit LaSalle and his two sons at Purdue, PJ and Isaiah. A father figure, a mentor, um, when the boys were born, you know, he, he was excited as if it's, you know, again, one of his um, kids being born. It was tough love. He really shaped us into men and letting us know, hey, I'm here for you. So that's the thing about Coach that I'll always remember. 
Siegel saw from the get-go what coaching meant. A lot of people don't realize it. every player that you coach, whether it's the last kid on the bench or the star of the team, that he doesn't realize it, but a part of him goes with you when he leaves. And you hope positively a part of you will go with him. There's no question Siegel leaves a legacy, and perhaps his most important was a scholarship. He started nearly 45 years ago to honor his son, Mark. It continues to this day. It'll always be faith and family, then and now. Well, he chose the path of faith, perseverance, um, gutting it out, making it through to stay strong, you know, for the family. And I, I, I don't know if there's any bigger test of a person than that. It's such a beautiful thing that Mark and David and I were able to witness and receive. But then the legacy continues on. And at Pike, it will for a long, long time. Day first, RTB6 Sports. We continue to honor the graduating spring sport athletes and RTV6 senior salute tonight to Hamilton Southeastern's Olivia Capuano. The Royals catcher comes complete with a rocket arm so good opponents rarely tested on the base pass. A student of the game and in the classroom. Excellent grades in all of her advanced classes and a member of Young Life. She's headed to Carthage College to continue her career. Her coaches say they couldn't be more proud of her. We are too. Good luck, Olivia. If you have an idea for a senior salute, email me at dave.first at wrtv.com. Visit chase.com slash mobile. It's your choice for news.